All right, let us get into it. Whew. Okay, it is Producer Tip Tuesday, my friends. So we shall discuss a topic relating to producer tips. Today's Producer Tip Tuesday topic is five reasons why your beats aren't measuring up. The feeling of like, oh, my, my beats are like, they're okay. Or like, oh, they're, they're cool for the fact that I know that I made them, but they're not cool if I play them against other people's music. I mean, these are just general things. These are general, very general tips. I came at this topic from the perspective of things that I would have told a younger me, um, less experienced me, to help me get to where I am now faster and get past where I am now faster. So number one, I think is very important, and that is sound choice. This can relate to the drum sound selection, what samples, drums, or otherwise you're using, instrument sounds, are you using pianos, synthesizers, whatever, and also loops, loop packs, uh, splice loops, stuff like that. So I kind of want to come at it from an angle where it applies to all those things. First of all, when it comes to drum sounds, the most important thing you can do is keep a folder of your favorite drum sounds. However, your DAW allows you to organize things. In Ableton, we have a favorite folder or a selection of favorite folders. So I just put all of my all of the drum sounds that I end up coming back to frequently uh, in there. Another thing you can do is just listen to your favorite tracks that you've made that have a really good drum sound that you like, that you think is competitive or uh, on track with the sounds that you want to make, the songs that you want to make, comparing yourself to other, comparing your music to other producers and other musicians. Find those beats that you've made, pick apart those drum samples, put them all in one folder, first of all, and then also make a preset or a template or something where you can easily just pull up that specific combination of drums. So that way that becomes a standard sound for you. I think people th uh, come in with this idea that they need to be constantly reinventing their drum sounds and like coming up with new ideas and uh, exploring new territory, which is it's good to explore new sounds, but you should have a bread and butter sound. And that's only going to help you in the long term to define your signature sound and also help you work faster and help you meet a threshold of a complete sounding beat faster. Make sure you also your favorite instruments are all easily accessible. So if you're always reaching for the same synthesizer patch, make it in an easy place to access. Don't make it more than two or three clicks to add it to your session. Make sure you set aside time to actually try out new sounds. Go searching for new sounds, make a list of drum packs you want to try out, of samples you want to try out, and then just have some times where you start a session with those fresh sounds. And also don't be afraid to say, wow, this is really whack. I, I'm glad I tested this out, but this is not this is not going to be part of my usual drum kit. That's totally fine, especially if it's some like, you know, famous producer or some famous uh, musician's name is attached to it. Don't feel any pressure to be like, oh, that means it's got to be good. I got to find out what's good about it. If it doesn't sound good to you, then don't use it. And then the the, the last thing with this sound choice topic is make sure you use loops and samples when you're feeling a little bit like your, your beats aren't measuring up. Try to find loops and samples that have the sound that you're looking for and then work with those. And then also think about how they, how you can achieve that sound. So let's say you're, you're feeling like your drum grooves are miss are missing something, pull up some drum loops, use them to make beats. You're already getting that feel and that groove into your into your body, into your ears and, and into your production workflow. And then when it comes time to make a beat again later, try to emulate that feeling. However you want to find a way to do that, you can, you know, try to copy the the loop directly in your DAW, or you can just kind of keep the the groove in your head and then just try to copy it uh, as much as you remember. That's a really good exercise. In a similar way, melodies, chords, anything like that. Percussion loops, I think I use a lot. And when I, when I started recording my own percussion loops, I tried to keep track of what kind of phrasing did I like about these percussion loops. Because sometimes I just use, you, you know, it's a, a straight 16th note shaker that I just pulled a loop for. I could just make that myself. So if there's something I like about it, then it has to be something different than just like the rhythm. It's probably the way they processed it. It could be like the stereo imaging, the saturation, the reverb on it, whatever. So it's good to use those things to also help you figure out how to make your own sounds 
uh, in the long run. So that's sound choice, a really important component to this. And just a comp uh, one of the most important parts of production in general, because, you know, it's like going to the grocery store. If you pick out bad ingredients, you're not going to be able to make something great out of those ingredients. You're not going to be able to, it's going to be very difficult to make something that's greater than those bad ingredients. You can do it, but it's, it's difficult. So you don't want to give yourself extra work, especially if you're feeling this way about your music that it's not measuring up. Don't make it too hard on yourself. Number two is intention and emotion. And I see this as a major problem that I've had in the past, and I still have to a certain extent, but make sure there's a reason why you're sitting down to work every time you decide to sit down to work. So whether that's an external goal, like I need to have this track done so I can send it to my friend, I need to have, uh, I need to finish writing this, this verse, whatever. Um, but also it could just be, I'm, I need to, I need to relax. I need to, I need to sit down and, and have a good time with this because lately when I've been working, it's been a grind. And so I need to find a way to make this fun again. That's also equally important, if not more important than those like goal, those more specific goal-based sessions. So make sure you have an intention when you sit down, it doesn't have to be, you know, get a million beats made, but it could also just be have fun and mess around and try out something new. The other thing is emotion. And when it comes to emotion, you have to be intentional. If you really want to seek out something, especially, you know, if, if all the beats you've made have been chill, if you want to make something that sounds harder, something that sounds darker, you have to make an intentional switch. So whether that's changing up the music you're listening to on a daily basis or exploring different sounds, having, an, having that intention to explore a new emotion, a new emotional space with your music, a new vibe with your music is important practice in trying to make yourself more versatile and also dive deeper into the sound that you're already uh, kind of steeped yourself in. So really intentionally kind of thinking about what is the sound of this emotion that I'm trying to convey. And you can't do that unless you're intentionally seeking out that sound, unless you're intentionally seeking, seeking to create a vibe that has a sad feeling to it or an energetic feeling to it, or aggressive feeling to it. If you're, if it's something different from what, what you usually create, then you have to intentionally make that switch. However that works for you, you know, if that means analyzing a bunch of beats uh, with like music theory, that's one thing. It could also just be like feeling that melody from a song you like and then trying to copy it, whatever works for you. But intention and emotion, those are two things that a lot of us just start making, making beats because it looks like fun, it looks cool. But after a certain point, we need to have some intention and some reason to keep doing it. And understanding that will only make it more fun and more interesting and make us be more effective with our work. Number three is arrangement and structure. And this is a big one because it's something that gets lost in the world of four bar, eight bar loops that we tend to be in. Like I was just working on the, these tracks here. We tend to think of things in eight bar loops or 16 bar loops or whatever the case may be. So once it comes time to create a song and when we're hearing other people's music, we hear it in this context of an entire song, not just an eight bar loop usually, unless you're hanging out with a producer and they're playing you some work in progress, you're hearing something on Spotify or whatever, and it's sounding complete because somebody took the time to go in and say like, okay, on measure five, the kick should drop out for two beats. On measure 23, we should have the vocal, uh, reverse or something like that or on measure 73 we need to have the the snare have a reverb swell and then cut off at measure 74. those kinds of really intense intentional arrangement and structure choices are really important along with that you have layering of things when layers come in and out so if your verse is 16 bars and it's the same eight bar loop twice that's obviously going to be really boring so if you send that you know, if you, if you want somebody to rap on that, then they have to carry that load of excitement to, to drive this verse through the 16 bars. They have to make it extra exciting because your instrumental is not providing enough excitement to begin with, to get the listener through 16 bars without getting bored. So when it comes to this, just really think every eight bars, something interesting needs to happen. Every eight bars, something new needs to happen. Something that will I'll just very slightly subvert expectations. It doesn't have to be 
something that completely devolves and you know there's a beat switch and it completely changes to a new song just some some intentional you know dropping out the drums transitions having things uh having effects and automation anything like that to subvert expectations and play with the energy levels in the track is really really important and that ties directly into number four which is mixing so mixing is I like to think of it as like the seasoning and final presentation of like a dish. No matter how much work you put in, how many hours or how many, like, you know, the, found the best ingredients possible. If you just throw it on a plate and you don't put the right amount of salt and pepper and like seasoning, or whatever, it's never going to taste as good as somebody who, you know, uses basic generic ingredients, makes it the same way that you do and just uses a little extra effort to season it and present it prop nicely. It's going to be a lot more appetizing. And in the same way, music, we hear music like commercially released music by popular artists, whoever, after it's been, it's, it's spent multiple hours, multiple uh, people have worked on it to make it sound as good as it can on multiple systems, speakers, on your phone, in your car. So if you don't take some time, even if you're not going to be the one mixing all your music, even if you're not, don't want to become a mixing engineer, knowing how mixing works in the most basic elements of it will allow you to have a lot more control and also will influence your production choices because then you're, you'll realize, you know, going back to number one, sound choice, you'll realize, oh, that snare doesn't have the right crack to it, doesn't have the right snap to it to really cut through the mix, even though I thought I liked it. When I hear it compared to other things, I recognize that that's what's really missing. It's not, you know, that I have a kick that's too loud or a kick that sounds wrong. It's actually my snare. And you have that clarity of listening and analysis so that way you can solve these problems. And you can, instead of just being like, oh man, my beat's not hitting, you can actually work through and be like, okay, my 808's not cutting through when my kick is coming in. How can I fix that? That doesn't even have to be something that you do yourself, but if you have somebody who knows how to mix, then you can say like, Hey, how, how do I do this? Or give it to them and say like, Hey, I need, I need you to, f I, I, can you fix this for me? Understanding that the best writing, the best production, the best arrangement, the best sound choice will all be ruined if you mix it poorly. And the listeners will never know that mixing happened because they assume that every song that they've heard is mixed because that's all they've they, that's all they've heard. So when they hear your song, no matter how good the writing is, no matter how good the arrangement is, no how no matter how good the production and sound choice are, it's not going to measure up because it's poorly mixed and it's the worst feeling in the world. I've had people tell me that my mixes suck before and I felt like my beats had come so far and someone was like, it's good, but the mixing is terrible. And it's just like, oh man, but like, why couldn't you just like see why, what was good about it? Like, why couldn't you just see like, you know, my idea, like, like a for effort, you know, but that's not how, that's not how people listen to it. And you need to be honest with yourself when you are making your own music and Part of that is being able to get into a little bit of the mindset, a little bit of the listening uh, perspective of a mixing engineer. Doesn't mean you have to become one, but make sure you understand the principles of it. The fifth reason why your beats aren't measuring up is because you're comparing yourself. So I know I talked a lot just now about using comparisons and references to hone in on things that are missing from your music, but never let this prevent you from making music. Your perspective is valuable. Your perspective and your skills that you have, your experiences, no matter how long or short you've been doing this, no, how, no matter how many instruments you play, no matter how much you understand about music history and theory, your perspective is valuable because that's what art means. So never let comparisons to other people, comparisons to other musicians stop you from doing what you're doing because we need your voice and you shouldn't ruin your motivation in search of improving yourself. Just to remember at the end of the day, why you're doing this, no matter how many times you need to compare your music and play it, A, B, test it against somebody else's mix or production or sound choice, whatever the case may be. And no matter how many times you may feel like you fall short, remember that there's one area where, you're, where you will never fall short. And that is in being you. So, Always remember that who you are, your perspective, your skills as you have as you have 
hone them at this moment, they are enough for you to be in this space. You have something to say. Don't let somebody else tell you or don't let yourself tell you that you don't have something to say and that you don't have something of value to provide in this conversation of music that we're all as musicians and as listeners and music fans that we're all participating in. Don't get stressed on a con- like thinking of it as a competition. Yeah, maybe in very specific scenarios, you can be like, wow, that person can play piano better than me, but that doesn't mean that they can produce songs better than you. That doesn't mean that they can mix better than you. That doesn't mean that they can arrange better than you. That doesn't mean that they can write lyrics better than you. Looking at yourself, looking, comparing yourself in only one aspect of your music to someone else doesn't reflect on your value as a musician or as your val- on your value as a person. So always remember that because even if you're feeling very down about your music that you have so far to go, that's a good thing. That's that's a recognition of like how committed you are to this that you want to get better. And if you decide like, oh, I wanna, I'm, I'm okay with you know this just being a hobby. That's fine too. But uh, be honest with yourself that that's what you want. 